Good morning, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. How's everyone doing? Also, where is everyone watching from today? Good, I'm so glad you're good. We're going to be painting fun little animals. I did do a little poll on my Instagram and got some suggestions. And then I've played around last night <laughs> with um, some sketches for the top ones. So we've got a couple that we'll be doing today. New York, Belgium, the UK, Illinois, Tennessee, Turkey, Argentina. Oh, good. <laughs> the hippo is pretty cute, huh? <laughs> so yeah, um, these are, we did these three here on the last live, and then we also did an octopus, and then since then I have done, um, in videos, since then we've done this little seal, and then this cow is coming soon. We also did, what else did we do so far? That's all that we've done so far, but I have I have a couple more um, coming up as well. Uh, these are ones I did afterwards, and then we're going to do a couple today that will be fun fun little adventures. In Canada, Idaho. I'm so glad you guys are all here. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. If you want to paint along today, you're going to need some sort of a watercolor brush. I'm going to be using a size 3 quill brush today. I'm also going to be using a white gel pen. This is my favorite one that I've been using recently. It is the um, Uniball Signo, and it does provide just these beautiful white lines. I have noticed that after they sit for a while and anything that has a pink undertone, it does turn it a little pink. You can see that kind of happening here. Um, so that is one pitfall of this, but other than that, it's my favorite one that I've ever tried. So. This is the one I'm going to be using. You could probably do this with just a black pen. I just I just like the white outlines. I think they're really cute and kind of subtle but bright. So I will be using that. I'm also using just Canson watercolor paper today because these are just fun little sketches. Uh, and I'm going to kind of tape off different portions. Uh, so TikTok... Uh, for reposting these. Yeah, if you can't paint along today and you want to redo this, when these are done, as long as there's not some sort of a glitch, which doesn't happen that often. I've only had two that I haven't been able to repost to YouTube um, just because of some sort of weird glitch that was happening. Um, but other than that, yeah, I post them all. So we, we have, um, like if you wanted to go back and do these these ones, during the live, I already have that replay on my YouTube. There we go. I've got this just kind of portioned out. Yeah, you guys, we've got so many people from all around the country as well as all around the world. That's, I, I don't know why, that just it gets such a kick out of that, that we can all come together from so many different places. Um, tips for along the borders, getting it nice and even. Um, I do it by eye. Uh, a lot of times I'll try to like line up the edge of this with the edge. So I will, you know, grab the piece of tape and then line it up. The other thing you can do if you have trouble with that is I have this washi tape um, that has this grid pattern and you can actually kind of see through it. And so you can actually line it up using kind of the grid pattern. So you could look for a grid pattern style in a washi tape. That might help you out too. All right, so I'm gonna let you guys vote for the first one. Um, we're either, we're, we're gonna do at least three today. So for the first option, should we start with a giraffe or an otter? And actually, since I wanna do a giraffe, I want one of these to, I wanna be able to maybe make it a little bit bigger and a little bit taller. So I'm gonna peel this off in uh, one quadrant so that we have a little more room to play with because I think it'll be fun to do the neck really long on the giraffe. So I probably shouldn't have taped this down. Whoop. 
And I've just ripped the paper there. Oh well. <laughs> Hello to South Africa. All right, I think <laughs> I think the giraffe uh, is winning. We'll do the otter second. So I'm gonna do the giraffe down over here in this corner. And I'm gonna pre-wet my paints. I'm probably, I'm gonna use uh, a light purple for the eyes. I'm gonna use obviously some kind of yellowish and then some brownish and maybe a little black or gray for the spots. And I haven't actually painted this one yet. I just did a little, a little sketch. This one's a little more realistic, but I think this one is cuter. So this is the one I think I'm gonna be trying to emulate today. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do about, um, we'll probably have time for about three-ish of these, if not maybe a fourth. Um, but we'll start with the giraffe. All right, so the first color that I'm gonna start with is kind of a nice light-ish purple color here. Oh, before I get started, um, does anybody need a little extra time, oh hi Monica, uh, to grab their supplies or give me thumbs up in the comments if you are ready to go. Brazil, California, oh my goodness. I got one thumbs up, all right. Maybe you speak for the group. <laughs> Also, I don't know how many of you are actually going to be painting today. You don't have to paint along. You can just come and hang out with us. That's totally fine, too. But if you do want to paint, um, we'll be doing these in iterations. So if you're like, I don't have time now, but I've got it in a few minutes, we'll be ready to go. I've got that light-ish purple color filled up in my brush. And I'm going to start how we start all of these by making these two circles that are about two circles apart from each other. There's one, and then here's our second. Trying to make them about the same size. They don't need to be 100% perfect because these are goofy little things. Then, um, just so it doesn't bleed too much, I'm going to tap my brush off here, and then I'm going to suck up a li that little bit of that extra color, just so it doesn't when I do kind of go around if I accidentally touch it it's not gonna bleed too too much all right so the next color I'm gonna put in my brush I'm gonna use kind of a yellow ochre type color because I think that'll be perfect for the main color of the giraffe and I'm gonna put make a little puddle of this so that because we're gonna be covering a fairly large area of this because that neck is gonna be so long so I'm just making a little puddle here so that I have a little bit more to dip into as I go around this. Um, any reason for purple for the eyes? I think it's cute, and then also purple is the complementary color to yellows, so um, I think it'll it'll look nice together. You could do whatever color you want. You could do a brown. You could do a blue. You could go pink. <laughs> what? These are kind of uh, these are creatures of our imagination, even though they're based in somewhat of our our realm of reality. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we always do with these is we're going to outline the eyes and make a little bit of a, a smile type shape. So I'm going to go around these and making kind of these little lines. I'm trying not to touch. These are also great exercises for brush control because we're having to practice not touching so that these don't bleed together. If you're worried about them bleeding together, you could always dry the eyes before moving on to this step so that you don't have to be super careful but I recommend challenging yourself at least once today in doing this. Now, usually what we do with these is we make this kind of smiley face shape, but for this giraffe, I actually wanna come out a little bit and we're going to bring it out on either side here. And then we're gonna give them a little, a little bit kind of going up and then down. So we have kind of a little bit of a lumpy head. <laughs> Then I'm going to fill in in between 
And I, as I go, I'm going to be dropping in more of this color because I want to keep this wet because once I have this whole shape defined, I want to come back in and I'm going to drop in those different colors. So his head is going to be, we're going to bring it here and then we're just going to bring it kind of, uh, how, how, how do I want to do this? Go out. Let's go out here because we'll layer on top for another layer here. We want to give him a little bit of a cute little chubby face here. And before this area dries out, let's go ahead and wash our brush. And then I'm going to put some, um, this is kind of like a burnt sienna type color. And I'm going to drop in kind of big little dots to give him his, to give him his kind of um, more geometric type spots. I'm not going to go too much down here because um, we are going to layer over that so those will kind of get lost anyways. And then while I have the head still wet, I'm going to take I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to put that yellow in and right from kind of where this part is, I'm going to bring out and we're going to give him his <laughs> little ears. And I'm going to let that kind of bleed into those. Same thing over here. rounding them a bit. And I'm going to let them touch in a couple spots. And then we also want to bring up, they have these little kind of um, antenna things. What are, does anybody know what these are called on a giraffe? They have a little kind of flat spot to them and they come straight up. All right, while we still have this, I'm going to take more of that yellow in. And then I'm just going to, I'm not going to quite touch it, but I'm going to bring where the neck is going to be and a kind of attach it, but not quite. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way down, making it a little bit bigger as I go down. I'm gonna fill that in with that color. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna grab that burnt sienna color again. And let's give him his spots. These are more geometric. I'm trying to be a little more geometric in how I'm putting these in than some of the other spots that I've made on different things because that's kind of what um, they look like. Now these ones bled together a ton up here. So we're just going to have to kind of go with the flow. If that does happen, let's do a little troubleshooting on that just to kind of help things. Um, we could dry our brush and then we could kind of lift in between to kind of give them a little more shape. And then we could come back in with more of that yellow color and kind of try to redefine some of those areas if you are having a little bit too much bleeding together in that area. Um, at this point, I'm gonna be drying this because in order to do anything to the next layer, I do need to let this dry or I'm gonna make it dry in this case. If for some reason you're going to be sensitive to loud noises, you're going to want to turn your volume down for probably about 30 seconds, and that will happen in three, two, and one. All right, I just finished drying it. So the heat one that I like to use that I found that works pretty good is Chandler Tools, and I just bought it on Amazon. They're called Ossicones? Oh, cool. All right, so the next steps, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding in our kind of snout area, which is going to, or mouth area, which will kind of help it pop out a little bit more. And then we're also be, gonna be adding in our pupils. <laughs> These are imagined, um, you know, this isn't a 
transportation. So I'm going to take a um, darker grayish purple color for the inner parts of the eyes. So it's this color, but when we la layer it on top, it's going to look even a little bit darker. And I'm going to start by putting these within, but they're going to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to just make these pupil shapes within. So two smaller circles within the initial circles. And they don't have to be completely perfect because when we do go in with the, one of the nice things about that white gel pen is that we can kind of clean up some of the shapes as necessary. Anybody else having problems with um, the microphone? All right, so for the mouth, uh, we have this color was our base and then this was our spots. I'm gonna actually mix them together for kind of the snout area. So it's gonna be kind of this color. And then I'm just going to fill this in right here. So we're making an oval kind of where we I'm um, overlapping this oval. And in my pretend little world, uh, he doesn't have or she doesn't have any spots on her mouth. I don't, I, th I don't think that's actually accurate. But for the sake of this, that's what we're going to go for. I'm going to round it out a little bit more because I think it'll be a little bit cuter. Sounds like some people are having mic issues. Also, I've been playing around with <clears throat> kind of improving my mic setup. However, everything I put into here, it has recording issues. Um, I'm using my handmade paints today, by the way. All right, so I am gonna dry this again because I wanna add in a background, but I don't wanna deal with accidentally touching any of these different areas. I was kind of thinking blue. Do you guys have any other options or suggestions for the background color? Okay, green and blue are the main suggestions. What if we did kind of do green down here so that it looked like the land and then we did blue up here? I don't know. Okay, well, we're gonna try that. I'm gonna start with the green at the bottom um, and I'm, I'm going to do like a greenish yellowish. So we're going to do some fun little effects at the bottom. So I'm going to bring this up to, I think about here. This is where our, our horizon is going to be. And when I put this here, then I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to take some of that yellow that I used in this and I'm just going to drop it in because I feel like this will, will make the color, um, more accurate to <laughs> where they would actually be because there is lots of greenery where giraffes live, but there's also a lot of desert type conditions. You can always, if you're like, I just want to do a solid color, then just do a solid color. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, I love when you guys change what I'm doing to kind of fit what you're thinking and, uh, yeah, what you like. See you there where that is not touching. That's because I kept holding it there. Um, and so my finger oils deposited. So you do want to be a little careful when you are touching your paper because that can happen. All right, so we're going to go for a nice blue. And I'm going to actually, I'm, I like to switch between blues as I'm doing this. So I'll probably start and I'll just dip into different blues as I move along. And I'm gonna put, tuck that under because I like to be able to spin as I go. Oh, you know what? I actually need to dry this. Sorry, I forgot about that because down here this was dry. So I'm gonna dry this again. 
Um, I'm gonna let it dry or make it dry. And if you wanna dance with me, you can, but if you're also sensitive to noise, turn your volume down for about 30 seconds in three, two, and one. All right, now that it's nice and dry, I can go back to my plan for adding in a blue background. And I'm just going to start by placing it in. And some, I'm not gonna be too fussy about how um, perfect my background is or whether it's touching or not, because we can always come in with those different colors uh, or with, with the gel pen and we can kind of clean up some of those lines. So I'm just dipping into a variety of different blues as I'm moving along because I'm kind of building in some variation, which I find makes making backgrounds a little more forgiving if you build that variation into it. I'm being kind of careful, but not too careful. Backgrounds are one of the, well, at least they were for me, one of the scariest things to learn. Um, and they can be really intimidating. So I think it's important, especially when you're getting started, to play around with just kind of doing them loose and trying to take the pressure off, realizing that it might not be perfect, and that's okay. And I like to, as you can see, <laughs> because I'm currently doing it, I like to move my paper around as I'm going because it just helps it so that it's easier for me to make the brush strokes that are more comfortable for me. All right, we got one more section where I gotta make this dry. So again, if you're sensitive to noise, turn your volume down for about 30 seconds in three, two, one. All right, I think it's pretty much dry. Uh, do I announce my live? So I always schedule them, uh, I do them every other week, and I always schedule them in my profile. So you can actually register, it's a free event, but it will add a little like reminder to your actual device calendar if you want it to. Um, yeah. All right, and then the white gel pen that I use that I'm currently really liking is the Uniball Signo. I got it on Amazon, and it just has really good coverage. Now, one thing, and I actually do go over this in a video, if you push super hard, it doesn't come out as well as if you push lightly. You can get so much more coverage if you really just kind of let it 
lightly slide over the paper. You get a lot more coverage. So you do want to have a lighter touch. The, this is our final step for this little painting where we're going to outline everything. So I always outline all of the shapes and I kind of do it a little bit messily. Again, I'm trying to kind of build in a little bit of, you can even add in little details like a little uh, fur maybe sticking up there. But I do it a little bit messily and I go over it a couple times. just to kind of um, create a little bit of fun and a little movement to this. Also, I have used this one so much uh, recently in testing this. Usually it takes me forever to use a white gel pen. This one is already probably like half done, but <laughs> I did also use this to cover basically an entire page of something. Um, yeah. I feel like that is how I know for sure that this one is a good one because I've used it a ton. I'm going around those those circles and then I'm going to give them a little, they kind of have these little like brow things. <laughs> and then this is always the, the step that really brings it to life. But these little highlights in the eyes just, just make it so cute. And outlining that main shape. Then he needs some nostrils or she. I'm just gonna make those little lines and then let's little mouth. <laughs> Maybe some eyelashes too. Because giraffes have incredible eyelashes. And I'm just gonna this part down here. If you wanted to, you could outline the different shapes within. You kind of get to choose your own adventure here. I think I'm going to keep mine here. <laughs> I think this one's so cute. And we've got Moogie back. Hi, Moogie. <laughs> Okay, so the next one we're going to do um, is going to be an otter. Okay, I love this one. This might be my favorite one. I feel like every one I do, I'm like, it's my favorite. But this one is my new favorite. <laughs> so we're going to try to do an otter. Uh, again, I this is not one I've painted. I just did like a little, a little sketch. So this is kind of the gen general sh um, shapes I'm going to be using on this one. So for this one, I feel like a light blue for the eyes is going to work. And I'm just kind of going with my gut on um, what I feel like using for the eyes. If you if your gut tells you to use something different, use something different. So my blue for the eyes is going to be kind of like this. Let's see. Yeah, the cow, I think the cow might be the next in the video series, by the way. All right, so I'm going to do this one up here. And we're going to start like we start all of these, where we're going to do two circles that are about two circles apart from each other, approximately. <laughs> you can kind of push the proportions on the circles. If you go a little bit closer or a little bit wider, it will help you kind of um, certain animals have a little bit closer set. E even though no animal's eyes, well, that's not true. Some animal's eyes are right on the side of their heads, but most of them aren't. Um, playing with how far or close these are together, even though these are kind of made up, uh, will kind of help you make your case for whatever animal you're making. We've got our two circles that are two circles apart. And then I think I'm going to go for gray for the otter um, shape, just because I think it'll be a little bit easier to kind of convey that point. But maybe kind of like a, a purpley gray color. So I'm thinking like a nice lighter color, kind of like this to start with. Okay, 
Kind of like what we did for the seal a little bit. And then we're going to go around the eyes. Like we did before. And we're going to make a little smiley face cap at the top. And then we're going to fill this in. This is the point where everybody's like, it's an elephant. It's going to be, it's going to be an octopus. It's going to be an elephant. And <laughs> we did do an, an octopus in the last one. Um, and then we're going to, we're going to bring this one out again. We're going to do kind of a, a cute little like chubby ish face here. Give him a little chubby cheeks. And fill that in. Keeping it a little bit wet, just so it's kind of even. And then they have these little cute little ears. Kind of here. I feel like this one might be able to look like several things, like maybe a little mouse or something. I don't know, my sketch, I, I'm a little skeptical. We'll wait to see how the... Um, the pen details can help to kind of save this. Then I'm going to go under here. I'm not touching. I'm just keeping it a little ways away. And then we're just going to bring it out because his little body. And if you wanted to get really creative, this would be super cute if you did some like hands or paws with a shell. But I did not study how any of those looked, so I don't feel confident in um, attempting that right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring a little bit darker here just to drop it in to give him, I don't know, a little shadow. Why not? And then I need to let this dry or make it dry. That one is a little bit too harsh there, so I'm just going to touch there. If you're sensitive to noise, turn your volume down in three, two, and one. So yeah, I started with the eyes. So somebody said baby hippo. It could be. Uh, I'm going to go for otter. I'm hoping the next couple things I do will kind of help to solidify that. We'll see. <laughs> um, but no, I did them. I did the eyes first, and then I just tried to very carefully go around them, leaving a little white space. Um, one of the things I love about little exercises like this is, I mean, this is a goofy little exercise, right? Like we're just painting these goofy little animals for almost no reason other than they're fun and they're cute. But there are little things we can take away. Like look how important it is to leave white space. Like if they just kind of all bumped up together, you kind of, everything blends together. And leaving a little of that white space is um, kind of crucial to a lot of things when you're painting watercolor. And so this is actually a really good way to kind of practice that. All right, so our next little detail. So this is my sketch that I'm trying to emulate right here. We're going to make kind of this upside down heart shape with a slightly darker gray color. So this was kind of the gray color I used. I'm going to darken my color a little bit and maybe a little more than that. I think that'll be good. And I'm gonna make this, start by kind of making like a, a frowny face. It won't stay frowny for long because then we're just gonna round these bottoms and bring that up. I might have gone a little bit too dark for this next layer. So I'm gonna wash my brush and fill it with water to kind of try to dilute it as I'm doing this. If this is going to be some sort of rodent. Uh, otter, I'm still a little bit skeptical if it's going to end up looking like an otter. Maybe I need to bring this out a little bit wider. Maybe? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. 
The white details sometimes bring whatever we have done just completely into focus, so we might be able to save it there, but we'll we'll find out what it's going to be in a minute. And I'm going to take a darker blue-gray to make the interior part of the, the um, pupils, so those two interior, maybe a little bit darker. Little circles inside the other circles. Okay, then I'm going to dry this, so if you're sensitive to noise, turn your volume down in three, two, and one. Now, I need a background for this one. What do you guys think for the color? For some reason, I'm thinking pink, but um, I don't know. In the meantime, I'm gonna fill up my brush with a pretty dark color, and let's let's make a little button nose. Th this might be a sir. This might end up being a squirrel, but I'm trying. I will try to bring it around back to otter. <laughs> In the end, we'll find out if it works. I do think, yeah, the, I, I do think the ears probably should have been maybe a little bit more here. You know, we could try to correct this uh, with the background and with me messing around with the ears. Do you guys want me to try to modify the ears to see if changing the ear shape will help? Because, um, yeah, I think you're right. I think if they were more here, it'll look more like uh, an otter. Let's try, let's just find out because you know, you're painting and this is gonna happen to most people where it's gonna look not exactly like the animal and you can always just adapt and say it's a different animal, that's fine. But what if we wanted to change it? So I'm gonna put those ears in here and then we'll just kind of modify um, by I'll paint over the old ears maybe here uh, with the background color. So maybe we will go with, somebody said purple. I'm gonna go with purple because that might help me kind of cover that. So it's gonna look real goofy right now. <laughs> but hopefully again, we'll be able to change this with the pen details and also me covering the background a bit with this a bit. So again, I'm gonna dry this real quick before I put the background in because I don't want that to bleed in. Okay, so that's gonna happen in three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna go for, um, we're gonna do some pinks and some purples for the background. I'm gonna concentrate the darker colors, obviously where I want to um, cover my, the things that didn't go quite how I wanted them to. And that's okay. So I'm gonna start with some of those brighter colors and I'm gonna kind of transition as I move up to those darker purple colors. I think it's really important that, um, like, do I love messing up while I'm painting in front of you guys? No, I do not love it. But I think it's actually one of those things where it's, um, I've actually come to really appreciate when I do kind of mess up because then I'm able to show you guys what happens and also like art isn't perfect, you know? You're gonna have little goof ups. And you're gonna need to make little modifications. And that's totally fine. Just putting in some random colors. 
with these different purples and filling this in. There we go. Not a perfect background and that's okay. Because those, hopefully the white pen details are going to fix this because he still looks a little goofy, but we'll, we'll, we'll make him cute. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry or make it dry. So if you're sensitive to noise, again, it's gonna be happening in three, two, and one. Then again, this is what I'm using. I'm using a white gel pen. This is my favorite one. I think it works really, really well compared to most white gel pens. Um, it's the Uniball Signo. I got mine on Amazon. I did, did have to buy a pretty big pack of these because I think these are imported from Japan. Because um, you can see there's Japanese writing on them. But gosh, this one is just, it's so good. Uh, if, you, if you don't have this or you, you don't have a white gel pen, you can do a variety of things. You could use a black pen. I think it would be cute. I just, there's something about the white outlines I really like. Um, if you don't have, if you want white, but you don't have white gel pens, you could take a nice fine liner brush with some white gouache. You could use a white crayon. You could use a white colored pencil. Um, there's a whole bunch of different solutions and you could play around with. You don't have to have the exact same supplies as me. All right, so we're trying to make this into an otter. I see like a little puppy dog almost. <laughs> so I think what we need to do is, um, first of all, I'm gonna outline the top part of this. I'm gonna make sure this is, there we go. We're gonna be really relying on this pen to do some heavy lifting for us. We'll find out. Now, when I was looking at pictures of otters, their little ears, they kind of have these like little like cap areas here. So maybe by adding that, that might help a little bit. Maybe adding that little cap. Okay, that did kind of help, although now it's more squirrel, a little less dog, but a little more squirrel. <laughs> yeah, the arms would definitely help, but I did not build those in. I mean, my little sketch, I feel like, looked like an otter, but I'm just, you know, it just didn't... It just didn't come together. All right. Let's add the highlights in so that whatever it is, it's cute. <laughs> I'm going to outline this. Okay, so here's another thing I think I did goof up on here. See how the weight on this side, it's a little bit further down where that... It kind of comes out. I put it up a little bit higher. So I think if I had brought it down a little bit more, that weight had been a little down here. I think that would have helped with the shape too. Let's see if I can erase some of that. We'll find out. I wet my brush and then tapped it dry. And I've got a paper towel kind of over here. I'm just going to see if I can bring this back. We'll find out. Sometimes these little subtle changes like that, I mean, this is going to kind of goof up the, the watercolor underneath just a bit, but I do feel like changing the weight of that a little bit helped and kind of where it bows out. It's probably not going to go over that area right now because that area is a little bit wet. <laughs> Let's give him a little nose. And let's outline this. And then we're also going to try to do lots of whiskers, which, <laughs> which might really help this. Because they do have really cute little whiskers. Still not convinced this is an otter. This is uh, something of our own creation, I suppose. 
Lots of little whiskers. The whiskers are kind of helping the case, but I don't know if it's totally selling it. <laughs> Yours looks like Ron Swanson. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, the dark might be a little bit too dark for sure. I might have a walrus coming and the walrus is really cute. <laughs> so from the pictures I saw with otters, they had these cute little rounded ears, but um, I might have been looking up a specific type of otter. Uh, yeah, this one, uh, this one is cute. I don't know if it's an otter, but it is cute. <laughs> All right, so the next one we're going to do, I'll let you guys choose, but um, this will, this will probably be our last one that we do. We can either do a goldfish or a cat. So let me know in the comments which ones you want to do and hopefully that one will go more according to plan <laughs> i it looks like oh cat was winning but all right i think cat cat has it what color cat do we want to do do we want to do like a calico cat? Do we want to do an orange cat? Do we want to do a black cat? <laughs> Pounce it. I do have a little sketch for a goldfish that I think is going to be super cute. So I have a feeling that will make the cut for an individual video coming up. Um, but it might be a little bit because I actually do have uh, quite a few on deck that I'm super excited about. And then I look for the colors. I think Calico is winning. A hairless cat. I don't, I don't want to paint. That would be difficult to paint. <laughs> Let's do calico because it'll kind of take advantage of being able to do some wet on wet effects, which will be kind of fun. All right. So again, hopefully this one will turn out a little bit better. <laughs> We're a little bit more uh, easy to recognize, but we'll find out. We're going to do our cat. So I think what color eyes should I start with? Should I do like orange eyes? Should I do... Um, should I do purpley eyes? What do we think? Green eyes? Okay, let's do, yeah, let's do some like, like bright, bright green eyes. All right, let me get my little tester strip. I'm running out of space. There's a moogie here. There we go. I don't know why, but this is the color I want. Like this bright kind of almost pea green, but um, that's, that's what I want. All right, so we're gonna start how we've started all these, where we're gonna make our two circles, about two circles apart. And we wanna make sure we're spacing on the page. So I'm gonna do these about halfway down so there's enough room for the ears. So a little bit further down than with the otter. Circle, circle, dot, dot. <laughs> That's what I keep thinking about while I do these. Two circles, about two circles apart. I am going to tap my brush off so that you know what? I'm going to dry the eyes real quick because I don't really want green fur. I want to keep it as white and black and kind of a nice like orangey or brown color. So I'm going to dry this. If you need to, turn your volume down in three, two, and one. Can 
There we go. If I had had to choose, I probably would have painted this as a black cat because my favorite cat I ever had was a black cat. All right, so this one, um, this is going to be calico. It's probably not going to have a ton of white space on it. Uh, not because we can't do that. What I recommend doing, if you really want your cat to be like calico calico, where it's going to have some of that white remaining, do this with clear water. You'll be able to kind of see it when you hold it up and you'll be able to see the reflection where you're placing this, but that doesn't really work super well for me showing you this. So I am going to have to use at least a really light gray in order to be able to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to mix up a super light gray as light as I can get it where it will still show you guys what I'm doing, um, but it won't preserve the white space quite as well but it will at least be visible to you, which will be helpful. Can we see that? And I think I need to go a little darker for you to be able to see it. Maybe here. There we go. I think you guys will be able to see this one. That's about as light as I can go. I'd like to go lighter. I'd like to go um, with clear water for this. So sub sub out clear water for this if you really want this to be kind of a calico color. All right, so I'm gonna outline these. We're kind of avoiding touching these. We're leaving a little white space in between. Bringing it out to kind of the top here. Uh-oh, my phone just made a or TikTok Live just made a weird noise. So hopefully the last time it made that noise, then it stopped a few minutes later. All right, I'm going to make a little cap here. So I made a little cap. I'm gonna keep dropping color in here to make sure that it stays kind of wet. Again, we've got our start for our, <laughs> our octopus or whatever this is going to be. Um, then we're going to bring it out here and we're going to make a little like point. Little point. And then this is going to kind of come down a little bit like this. I'm going to kind of fluff out the sides here. Pretend like he's got a little fluffy face. And we'll bring up the ears and they're pretty pointed. A little more like triangles. And then now to try to get some of that white space back in, I'm going to try to lift out a little bit. I don't know if it's going to work super good on this. And then I'm going to take some darker colors and we're going to drop this in. Remember, we got, we're trying to do calico. We're going to see if it works. Where I lift it out, now it doesn't want to run as much, which I guess is kind of good. And then let's take some, um, kind of some yellowish brown colors to put in. I probably should have just done a black cat. <laughs> this might have been a little ambitious without being able to have the white, because I feel like the white is pretty crucial to the Calico Cat, but it's okay. <laughs> We've got a very spotted cat. All right, I'm going to add in a little body with that light gray again. I'm going to add in kind of the neckline. And then for this one, I do think I am going to bring up a little tail, <laughs> just kind of coming in from out of frame. This is probably going to look like a fox. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it will be a cat in, in my imagination. I feel like a black cat probably would have been a little easier. But you know what? We're experimenting. We're trying. Also, his tail probably should have just gone like that instead of whoo. Okay, let's try to, hmm, I'm going to leave it. It's fine. It's got a really weird, it's got a really weird tail. 
his body more fluffy you want let's maybe let's make him a little bit floofier sure all right i'm going to dry this layer and this if you need to turn your volume down in three two and one So I've got two plans here. The first plan is that I'm going to take a really dark, kind of like a black color, and I'm gonna make those little like almond shapes in the eyes, which will kind of help us define that this is more like a cat than anything else because cats have these really unique shapes to their eye. <laughs> <laughs> this looks so goofy right now. <laughs> um, the next thing I'm going to do is, so I want to add in, this was kind of the idea for the cat, but I went a little floofier. So I was going to add in that little like uh, heart shape down here, which I want to do. But a lot of times cats have like whiter, like that area is whiter. So I think what I want to try to do is lift it out instead. So I'm going to start... This will depend on your colors, so you might have to go with a different one. But I've got clean water in my brush. And I'm painting on that shape, that kind of heart shape. And I'm lightly scrubbing. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and press. And look, we we're able to lift out like the little um, mouth shape. So it's lighter, so we can have the little cute little cheeks that are kind of white with the white fur. And then we might as well, let's put a little pink nose while I'm right here. <laughs> this is, again, this is gonna look real goofy until we add in the outlines. I'm, I'm hopeful that the outlines are going to help this, but we will see. Um, all right, what color should we do for the background? The muzzle, yes. <laughs> oh, it does kind of look like he's wearing overalls or she's wearing overalls. All right, pink. We're, we're doing a pink background. Let's do like a, yeah, pinky. Maybe I'll put a little orange in there or something. I don't know. The tail, the tail is goofy. Hey, at least our giraffe was super cute, okay? <laughs> I do think this one will be cute after all the details that we add in. Um, but yeah, it will be... It's not quite what I had in mind. I'm putting some orange in there just because I think it'll be kind of a fun color addition. And I'm moving it around so that it is better for, for the angles that I want to achieve. My dad's cat has these little tufts on the tips of her ears. She's also kind of a wild little kitty and makes me think she's like closely related to a lynx or something. <laughs> like maybe she's not just cat. <laughs> All right. So 
So I am going to dry this. Um, so if you're sensitive to noise, turn your volume down in three, two, and one. All right, while I'm outlining this, I did see somebody asking, I'm using my handmade colors today, um, but I will say this. I have drawers full of different types of watercolors, and I've done t tests on a ton of them. My main thing that I want you guys to do is create. You don't have to use the exact same supplies as me. Um, as a matter of fact, I encourage you to use what you have instead of going and buying more. I mean, I do sell my stuff, and so, like, obviously I'm biased towards things, but that's not my, I mean, like, obviously my goal is to sell things, but, like, my main, main goal is to have you guys create stuff, and so you don't have to use the exact same things as me. You don't have to go out and spend a ton, ton of money to come and have some fun with these. Use what you have, and, like, it will help you appreciate when you do go purchase different supplies that work better. Um, as well as there's just different availability. We have people here from all over the world, and I just, I cannot offer international shipping, and I'm really sorry about that. I just, um, it's just, it's just not feasible. I also recently have had, like, um, I did do some international shipping, like, back in 2021. And, um, recently I've been getting fees on things from 2021 that, were unforeseen and um, yeah, it's just not something I can do. Anyways, so yeah, I, I do want you guys to just use what you have if if you already have something. Okay, it's saying my live is going to end if I don't verify. Hold on, hold on. It thought I was gone or something. Weird. I had to I had to tell them I wasn't a robot. Um. Yeah. Other brands that I think are fun to use. I like Core. That's one of my favorites. I've been really liking Mission Gold. Um, Koi, as far as kind of more of a, a middle ground palette, is also a really good one to use. Okay, it's, I feel like it's coming together. Oh, I, I picked up a whole bunch of that, <laughs> that pink, I rolled it onto there, so now the pink is going to be on the snout. Oh well, we're going with it. Or the, the muzzle, sorry. And lots of whiskers, I gotta be kind of light with the touch. I'm going to try to get rid of some of that pink that I rolled into there. Maybe, maybe a few too many whiskers. But I do feel like this one at least kind of looks like a cat. Eyebrow with, oh yes, those little, a really long one, if I can get it to, I do love these little whiskers that they have kind of on their eyebrows. Maybe a couple little fluffies in their ears too. <laughs> the proportions are a little goofy here. This side probably should have gone out more. That would have helped it. Um, it, it, it is, <laughs> it's a cat, not a cat. <laughs> oh goodness. It could be, it could be a squirrel. That's, <laughs> this one could be kind of anything. Let's just pretend like this is the one I painted. Uh, the other two need, need a little more work, but they are, um, they have potential, I suppose. The giraffe was definitely <laughs> uh, the best. 
Uh, that is it for today's live. I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me and bearing with me through these ones. Um, our next live will be in two weeks. And I'm not sure what we'll be going over yet then. We might be doing more of these, but we might have moved on to something else, depending on kind of what you guys are interested in, things like that. Um, either way, I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much.